So after bundle branch block, we are going to see the uh, fascicular blocks. <laughs> the fascicular blocks, as you know, the fascicles are there only for the left bundle. And the two fascicles are left anterior fascicle and left posterior fascicle. So it is possible to diagnose the individual fascicular blocks also from the electrocardiogram. The fascicular blocks are there only uh, since 1970s and 80s. Till the time the fascicular blocks concept was not there. Till that time it is uh, it was only diagnosis of bundle branch blocks and not fascicular blocks. So the advent of uh, the diagnosis of fascicular blocks greatly helped us to diagnose advanced conduction disturbances. It had helped us to diagnose the future complete heart blocks. A patient was likely to have developed a future complete heart block, future stroke sadam or future sudden death and we can actually prevent those uh, uh, dangerous complications by intervening early. So that's why the fascicular block is very very important and and also it has to be seen as a very important marker when not, especially when it is associated with a bundle branch block very important marker of a future uh, major conduction disturbances to the heart. So why we have to know about fascicular block is once it indicates a disease of the conduction system especially below the AV node. So it's a distal conduction system disorder. So as I told you in the presence of a bundle branch block, the fascicular block means there is an additional problem. So it may require a pacemaker therapy to prevent sudden death and also a future complete heart block. Other important reason to know about fascicular block is that it can mimic, mask or modify the ECG changes of myocardial infarction, especially inferior myocardial infarction in high lateral myocardial infarction. Because fascicular blocks are going to produce changes in axis. So as I told you in axis lecture that axis produce problems only in limb leads. So the two infarcts which happen in limb leads are inferior infarction and high lateral myocardial infarction. So these two infarctions can be masked, mimicked or modified by the associated presence of a fascicular block. So it is difficult to diagnose sometimes associated inferior infarction, high lateral infarction in the presence of fascicular block. To start with at the beginning, they were called as hemi blocks. So subsequently, a better terminology of fascicular blocks came in. So I told you fascicular block produce abnormal axis deviation. So primarily you are going to diagnose fascicular block by abnormal axis deviation. That's why you have to have a very good knowledge of uh, electrical axis to diagnose fascicular blocks. And because they are going to produce abnormal axis for diagnosing fascicular blocks, we are not going to look at the chest leads. We are going to look at only the six limb leads, L1, L2, L3, AVR, AVL and AVF. So this diagram is very important. I have shown you many times during this course of this diagram where I have positioned all my six limb leads around the heart. So L1 is horizontal, L2 is intermediate, AV is vertical, L3 is right, AV is left and AVR is no man's land. Why I am putting this diagram is to understand the group of leads we are going to see to diagnose fascicular blocks. There are only five leads we are going to see. We are not going to see AVR to diagnose fascicular blocks. Either we are going to look at the superior and left sided leads or inferior and right sided leads. The inferior and right sided leads are inferior leads are L2, AVF and L3 and the right sided lead is L3. And superior left sided leads are L1 and AVL and left sided lead is AVL. So fascicular blocks are going to produce significant changes in this inferior and right sided leads, inferior and right sided lead and superior and left sided lead. So that's why we have to group these two leads together L1 and AVL, L2, AVF and L3 to diagnose fascicular blocks. So it's very important to understand that the fascicular blocks are going to produce either left axis deviation or right axis deviation. 
you are not going to diagnose vesicular block in the presence of a normal axis deviation or intermediate axis deviation. So, we have to suspect vesicular blocks only when there is a left axis deviation or a right axis deviation. As you know, right axis deviation is tallest R wave in L3 and deepest S wave in AVL. Left axis deviation is tallest R wave in AVL and deepest L wave in L3. So, the presence of a normal axis or the presence of indeterminate axis almost exclude the fascicular blocks. So, that is an important concept to be remembered before we go into the details of fascicular block. So, once again, I keep on showing this diagram because once again, here, the fascicular blocks are going to happen an abnormal ventricular depolarization. Just like bundle branch blocks, they are going to produce abnormal ventricular depolarization. So, in bundle branch block, you looked at the QRS only, but you predominantly concentrated on QRS in the chest leads. Whereas, to diagnose vesicular blocks, once again, you are going to concentrate on QRS, but the QRS you are going to concentrate on limb leads. So, because it is going to produce abnormal axis deviation. So, because of that, you can have, once again, you remember, if ventricular depolarization is coming towards a lead, that lead will record the tallest QRS complex. If the ventricular depolarization is going to go away from a particular lead, that lead will record deepest negative QRS complex. Once again, we have to apply this same principle to diagnose fascicular blocks.